Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. Now this video is going to be pretty interesting. This is about pouring and finishing a daylight basement floor. This was about an 1800 square foot concrete floor. And this type of basement when you have the high concrete wall in the back and then the walkout part in the front which the concrete walls even with a concrete floor we call a daylight basement floor. So basically the basement can be a finished area and what these these people live right on the lake so to the left of the video that you can't see look you can see a little bit in the background some water but they live right on the lake so they're gonna have a really nice view now we had to use a conveyor truck to pour this floor because we couldn't get a concrete truck down around the front and they didn't really backfill that that tall wall in back very good so we couldn't get a concrete truck very close to that either so it was either use this conveyor truck or use a pump truck and I just decided to use a conveyor truck on this job. It's going to be about 20, I think it was 24 yards we poured in this. So it'll be three trucks, about eight yards a piece. You can see the conveyor kind of makes it a little easy. It puts it pretty much right where you want it. They got some type, they, they actually put blown in styrofoam down. That's what that yellow foam is under the floor. And then they got the wire mesh in there, and then they got some rebar in there where the, there's going to be a big chimney pad right there. So they blew the styrofoam on the, right on the gravel and up the wall just a little bit in the back. You can see about a foot up in the back. So we're getting the first part of the floor poured out. What we, we're using a brand new MBW uh, Viber screed today too, guys. So I'm going to let you know how my thoughts on that and you know if I recommend that to you or not and uh, that's what you see there we've used a different Viber screed in the past but MBW asked us to use this and let you guys know what, how we feel about it you can see Viber screed and concrete versus kick screed and a lot of times we'll kick screed our concrete too so if you've seen any of my other videos um, you've seen us kick screed a lot. Viber screeding can be quite a bit easier at times if you've got the right floor and the right application for it. If you guys don't know me, you know, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. This is my business. There's Luke and Darren in there. Those are my two top guys. Uh, I got my daughter works for me too. She's not on this job here. You know, I, I got a couple people that help me during the summer for summer help. But we specialize in all types of concrete flat work, floors, slabs, stamp concrete, you know, we'll do patios, pool decks, all that kind of stuff. We'll do repair, we'll do epoxy floors. So if you like any of that stuff, you know, go ahead and hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And if you find any value in this video at all, please go down there and smash that like button. That'll help my videos rank a little better on YouTube. Let's see if we can get a thousand likes on this video. That, guys, that will really help me out. So we'll get this truck first truck poured out get it screeded that's normally what we do we dump out one truck we get that truck screeded then we move on to the second truck it was a little chilly out this morning you can see we all got our hoods up it was it was about 40 degrees out this morning so it's you know we're still fighting the weather up here in Maine it's just doesn't seem to want to warm up too too fast for us usually it's in the 60s this time of year You can see the guys are trying out that Viber screed. What I did notice about it when I first used it is it was really lightweight. That thing, I don't know, it's the lightest one I've ever used. So that's that's a pretty cool thing about it, you know. Picking that up, setting it down, moving over, picking up, setting down. When you're walking in concrete like that, that's not an easy thing to do. So when you got something that's really lightweight, that's obviously going to make it a little bit easier. We're back in that them trucks around we're gonna move the conveyor truck and then the second truck has to dump into the conveyor truck so they got to be side by side up there you got to have enough room to do that otherwise if you don't you know you're better off just pumping the concrete i got my my grade stick in here if you saw that i'm using my i use a topcon rl h5b self-leveling laser when i'm shooting my my pads in here so those pads those wet pads I'm making in the middle are the same height as the top of that concrete wall right here in front. But we're making this floor perfectly level. And we use a laser and wet pads to do that. We don't 
in something like this we don't set grade pins we don't have a screed board or anything like that we just we've been taught to wet screed and that's what we do and now I'm running that again it's my turn to run the, the MBW Viber screed it's got a Honda motor on it so I mean it started right up on the first pole that made uh, that always makes life easier when you have a motor that starts right up the the size of that screed board is a it's a 12 footer too they got different sizes but they sent us the one with the 12 footer which is that's the size we use a lot we use a 12 we use a 14 a lot you can see the key to vibra screeding is having a couple good rakers behind it they want to keep that concrete so there's, you're only pulling back, you know, maybe about an inch roll. You can see there's a little bit high right behind the screed I'm pulling back. That's what you want, just a little bit. You don't want it too high or it'll vibrate under the screed. And you don't, definitely don't want it low or you'll leave a hole. So Luke and Darren are, are working to make sure that's perfect. And then, you know, the guy running the vibra screed, he's just, he's just giving it some throttle, watching the two ends, making sure the two ends are touching and just pulling back on it slightly so it's it's actually the two guys raking that are doing the most work now we're in this little section where there's a bunch of pipes so we're using the hand screeds in here I had a five footer Luke's got a seven footer going around all these pipes and just making sure everything's really nice and flat in that area and Darren's getting the bull float out he's getting that all bull floated you can see how the boot on that that conveyor truck you can kind of move that all around get that concrete pretty much right where you want it Luke and I are coming off that last load with the hand screed there we're gonna bring it down then Luke's gonna grab the the fiber screed and bring it on down so what we determined was you know we really like this fiber screed it's it's really smooth running it's really lightweight uh, I would highly recommend getting it. I'll have a link for it down in the description if you want to check it out. But as far as, you know, getting a floor done like this, I mean, it made it screeding this thing really easy. And then it's really easy to, the board and the, the motor part of it are held on by just two bolts. So it comes apart and puts together really fast, really easy. Makes it easier for transporting and easier for, for cleaning up and washing. And you see I'm bull floating that last little piece. So now what we're doing, I'm going to show you just how we power trial this thing. We're getting a, that's an MBW power trial. That's a 36 inch power trial. And MBW sent us that also and wanted us to give you guys our, you know, recommendations on that. Since we, you know, we basically power trial floors just about every day. I've also got a Whiteman in there that, that I've had for years. I've had Whitemans for years and years. So... They wanted us, MBW wanted to send me a trial and just let me know what the, what we thought of theirs. We have a crane on back. That's why I wanted to show you guys this. You know, for you guys that do floors like we do, that crane on back, it's really inexpensive. You can get one for about a couple hundred bucks. I'll, I'll see if I can get a link for that and put it in the description also. And then what we do is we mount a little uh, two-ton um, winch on top of it and just hook the winch to the battery. And the winch comes with a remote, so that makes real easy lifting and, and dropping those trials in and out of the truck onto the floors. And mounting them, you know, mounting them's easy too. It's just four bolts. I mean, you just got to have something strong enough to hold it. But it lifts those three-foot power trials. We got four-footers. It lifts the four-footers out real easy. So those, those cranes are definitely something you should have if you're a, a concrete floor guy. So you can see Darren still got his pouring boots on, so it, this thing set up. It did set up pretty fast. We did put accelerator in it. It did have, you know, it was right out in the sun. It was a little windy, so the concrete was drying pretty good. The concrete guy is still using warm water, so he's floating it. He put on these float blades over the finish blades, and on the first pass, we call this floating it. So Darren's getting out there and he's floating the concrete. And now Luke's Luke's gonna lay it down with the finish blades using the MBW power trial. You can see how smoother those finish blades leave it. The float blades, you know, are just for bringing up the pace, pushing down any any surface rocks, filling in any holes, cutting out any little tiny humps, and filling in any dips. 
and then the finish blades obviously give you your final finish. So we're going to go over this probably three or four times with this MBW power trial before the floor is completely done. But we've used this a couple times now and my guys really, really like this MBW power trial. They just, you know, it's a high RPM and low vibration handle power trial the way they've designed it. So it's really smooth operating. And my guys, obviously they love the high RPMs. You can see I'm doing the, I'm trialing Luke's edges for them. Whenever we, whenever we hit the floor with the power trial, we always have a guy go around and buzz the edges, make sure the edges come out really nice also. So Luke's up there, he's putting the finish on that. Like I said, we we finish it, you know, probably three or four times with the power trial. We, we hit the floor, we let it dry, then we hit it again, let it dry. And that, every time you hit it after you've let it dry, it gets a little smoother and smoother. Darren's finishing up floating that very last truck. Then we'll kick the float blades off of that power trial and use that for finish too if we need it. So now in the back you can see there's a little sheen to the concrete. That, that piece is done. We call that burnt out or shining out. You know, you, you other guys that do floors, you know, let me, down, let me know down in the comments what you call that. We usually call it burnt out. So Luke's burning the concrete out for the final pass and after he does that we don't have to hit it again that's done and we'll just keep moving on down the floor until all the floor looks like that I'll try to give you a little closer up here you can see how fast those blades spin there that just that you know in the sun that makes finishing a little easier when you have a higher rpm power trial like that see the floors turning a little darker color kind of a, a darker gray or even a black in some spots that's that means you're done so you buzz over it like that and then you just keep moving on until all the floor looks like that and then we'll put the saw cuts in it for expansion joint when, you know before we get out of here but that's it guys that's the MBW Viber Screed the MBW Power Trial we're using we, we really like both of them they work really good they, they're helping make our jobs easier so I highly recommend both of them Check them out down in the description below. And thanks for watching, guys.